I thought I'd talk to you about the International Space Station, what it is, how it came to be, and how you can see it from your own back garden. This is a photo of it. It looks a bit like a satellite. But the difference is that there are people living and working there, and satellites are unmanned. In fact, astronauts have been taking turns to live there for over 20 years. The ISS wasn't the first space station. There were others that came before. The Salyut 1, Salyut 7 and Mir were all Russian space stations and Skylab was built by the USA. They were all used to conduct scientific research, but they were undoubtedly funded by the Cold War between those two nations. The ISS, in contrast, is a truly international project. It's also much bigger. So you might think, how could they get something that big into space? Well, the answer is in pieces. Different countries were responsible for building the pieces here on Earth. And they were flown into space to be put together. Russia and the USA, once bitter enemies, flew the first modules up in the twilight years of the 20th century. Since then, the station has been added to with modules from Europe and Japan too. The latest modules have come not from countries, but from companies as corporations expand into the final frontier. You can see here many of the modules that make up the ISS. Can you imagine how much work went into building these components? And the coordination that it took to take them into space and make them all fit together. So what is it actually for? I mentioned earlier the previous space stations were for scientific research. And the ISS is no different. There are lots of experiments and research that need conducting to enable humanity's aspirations of interplanetary travel. Once this travel is possible, the ISS might be repurposed as a staging platform for missions to the Moon or to Mars. It might even become a popular tourist destination. I think its most important function is more symbolic. It's a symbol of what we can do as a species when we stop trying to fight each other and work together for the greater good. I was going to talk to you about how you can see the ISS flying across the sky. If you're interested, search the internet for an ISS tracker. It looks a little bit like a shooting star because it travels at over 17,000 miles an hour. Thanks for watching this talk. I'll leave you with some actual footage from the ISS from the astronaut Chris Hadfield. This is ground control to Major Tom You've really made the grid